morning, Victory's Vision Christian Church, all you saints of God, holy, blameless, and unaccusable in God's sight and hopefully in your own sight. But that takes knowledge. You need knowledge of who you are in Christ, the benefits of being in Christ, what happened at Calvary, the death, burial, and resurrection, which, which was also your death, burial, and res resurrection. And also what happened in Genesis, the two laws, which is, represents the two trees. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is also the law of sin and death. It's also the Mosaic law and the Ten Commandments. It was to show you that you needed to be back under the law of life, the tree of life. And Jesus at Calvary made that way. He made it, he opened that wide to you and through taking Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that is one of your greatest benefits is salvation. But you could live still under this tree because that law happens to be in your members. It was put there by Adam. Every human is born with it. That's what he passed down to us. Through knowledge, the Bible says to renew your mind to the true knowledge of the new man. When you get saved, you're a new creation. Most Christians are walking around and they have no idea that they are a new creation, nor do they walk in it. They need teaching. They need training and equipping. And that's what this church is all about. Go to our YouTube page, or our, um, our, our page, which is victoriesvision.org, and it'll take you to our YouTube page, over 250 teachings. And if you listen, re-listen, and listen, uh, I recommend Thy Kingdom. That's a great teaching I just listened to a couple times. And uh, the one from last Sunday was great. It's up there now. So you listen to these teachings, you'll have different thinking about God and yourself and what you have in the Lord. Then you'll start speaking it over your life and you'll have a different life, a much better one. Today's teaching is a vivid past gives you a dull, brings a dull future. You don't want a dull future. Most people spend a lot of their time in the past, either things that are bad that happened to them or even things that are good, and they just get stuck there. And it eventually it can lead to a lot of anxiety, a lot of fear, a lot of depression, and that's just what the enemy wants. So Pastor John's gonna come now. I wanna remind you that on victoriesvision.org, we have PayPal. If we've blessed you spiritually, bless us monetarily, because then we can boost these teachings. Everything we do on the internet, they charge us. Even editing all of these uh, teachings, which Pastor John does, they charge us. So we appreciate your support and all the people here say it. Good morning, gang. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Woo! They're ready to hear the word. I hope you're ready. <laughs> and always remember, don't just be a hearer of the word. It's not going to do you any good. But be a... Doer. 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 A doer, not a doubter. That's right. That's even better. Well, you're awful pushy today there. <laughs> well, good morning, Victory's Vision Christian Church, teaching you how to see yourself the way God sees you. Got your glasses on? Hallelujah. Everybody out there, you got those glasses on? Yes. Yes. Got to see yourself the way God sees you through the blood and through the cross. Uh, we also have our YouTube, I put our YouTube web uh, address up there. If you want to have, we've got about, what, 260 teachings up there now. It's growing every day, every week, growing every week, so you got to listen. Well, today, what are we going to talk about? We are going to talk about a vivid past brings a dull future. What does that mean, huh? You have a choice. You can look at your future in your mind, or you can look at your past. Most people, a lot of Christians too, are focusing on the past. Oh, it was so bad. My life growing up was so bad. Or, my life was so good there, it's not as good now. And they're dwelling on that past. And a lot of that past we're dwelling on doesn't have Jesus in it. And things weren't just good enough for us. What happens? Now that you have Jesus, if you don't, we're going to show you how. But when you have Jesus... He gives you hope. It comes as the package, 
Everybody say that hope. H O P E. Hope comes hope. comes as the package with your salvation. Salvation. It means to always expect good from the Lord. And the Bible says in Romans 5 5, his hope does not disappoint. Hallelujah. So you got to be focusing on that. Too many of us, we get depressed because we look at the past and we wonder, what are we going to do? I don't know what to do, Lord. Uh, the future's just not like the past. Oh, or the past was so terrible. That's all I can think about. What happened in my life? What a disaster. Don't. It's going to hurt you. It's going to control your emotional state. How vivid is your past? What does vivid mean? Vivid, producing powerful feelings. You have powerful feelings about your past? Mm, good or bad? Or strong and clear images in your mind? Was your past good? Or was your past bad? With a vivid mind and the past, both good or bad memories can cause problems. Pastor John, how can good memories cause problems? I'm going to show you. Bad memories. Hmm? You don't want to hear them. You don't want to listen. You don't want to watch those. Some of us have hurts and pains from our past that take up most of our focus. Hurts and pains. Some of those images of the past have become so vivid that they completely block any views of the future. Hmm, is that you? Is that you out there, huh? Do you look at your past and wonder, oh, I should have, would have, could have, I should have, would have, could have. My life would have been so different. Painful emotions can destroy our future if we let them take over. Our emotions are created and controlled by our inner images. You want good emotions or you want sad emotions? You want good emotions or you want fearful emotions? What are you looking at? Good memories aren't always good. What, Pastor John? I don't believe that. I have very good memories about my past. It's the future that I don't like. It's the future that I don't like. You know what's happening right there? You are comparing the two. And you're thinking, how come I'm there in the middle? How come I'm suffering when I didn't suffer before? How come I'm having a hard time now and I didn't have a hard time then? Oh, How good? How can good memories affect our future? When we compare our present with good memories of the past, when we compare our present things that are going on right now, with memories of the past, then we see that the present is deficient compared to the past. Hmm? The, the present, I don't have what I had before. I used to be doing so good. I had a great job. I was doing so good. Money was never a problem. You know, oh, I had a spouse then. What happened, Lord? What happened to me? Well, we'll conclude the future will not be good. That's what we'll do. We'll think it's over. My life's over. And you know what? A lot of people do that. There's a lot of suicide going on. You know, they say military people, soldiers, every, what is it, every hour or whatever, 20 of them, every day or something, there's a great number, 20 or something above, kill themselves. Why? Because they're looking at their future as hopeless. They're looking at their future, there's nothing there. I may have had a wonderful, wonderful life before, but I sure don't have it right now. I went through a war. I got no more legs. I can't do anything, huh? What do I do, Lord? We will conclude the future will not be good. This conclusion makes us lose heart and lose hope, which then will bring about a state of depression. Are you living in depression because you're comparing your past and your present? Oh, my God. When we focus on our future with this type of comparison with the past, we will allow our future to look very, very, very dull. Huh? Good memories, they can do that? Yeah. You know? If you look at them, that's okay. Just don't compare them with today. Or, you know, hopefully if they're better today than they were, keep looking at the future. Is your memory affecting your faith? Is it? Yes? No? Maybe? There were foreigners. This is scripture, Matthew, Numbers 11, 4 through 6. This is out of the Good News Bible. There were foreigners traveling with the Israelites. They had a strong craving for meat and they weren't eating any meat. They were hungry and hungry and that's what they wanted so bad, huh? Even the Israelites themselves began to complain. 
Now, we don't complain, do we? Any churchgoers out there complaining? Ladies, men, gentlemen, whoever, are you complaining about your life? Are you complaining about food? Oh, I'm so hungry. I could go for a Big Mac right now. I could go for it. Huh? Nice piece of juicy, salty bacon. Hmm? Oh. <laughs> but them foreigners, hmm, they had a strong craving for meat. And even the Israelites themselves began to complain. If only we could have some meat. In Egypt, we used to eat all the fish we wanted. And it cost us nothing. We ate everything. But you're in slavery. I don't care. My food was great. They didn't harm me for my food. Huh? Do you live for food? Some of us do. Huh? If only we could have some meat. In Egypt, we used to eat all the fish we wanted. And it cost us nothing. Remember the cucumbers, the watermelons, the leeks, the onions. It doesn't sound like a good dish, though, does it? Remember the cucumbers, the watermelons, the leeks, the onions, and the garlic we had. But now our strength is gone. Now, there they are in the desert. And what's going on, huh? Now our strength is gone. There is nothing at all to eat. Nothing but this manna day after day. Huh, we just got to eat that manna. What about that manna? Do you know the Bible says in the Word of God there's hidden manna? And you know what that manna helped them to do? Some of us don't even realize that. They were in the wilderness for 40 years. 40 years in the wilderness. How long does a pair of shoes last on you, huh? Well, I know some person that they're gone in about a week. <laughs> oh, I'm going to get it after this one. Anyways, they lasted all 40 years. Their clothes did not wear out. Their shoes did not wear out. It, the stuff did not wear out. Why? I think it's because the manna. Supernatural, godly food that they could eat. Huh? The rich young ruler. Most of you have heard this Bible story about this guy. The rich young ruler's past blocked his future with Jesus. Here he is in personal contact with Jesus. Behold, a man came up to him saying, Teacher, what good deed must I do to have eternal life? You think he was in works? What good deed must I do? Yeah. And he said to him, Why do you, Jesus said, and he said, Jesus said to him, Why do you ask me about what is good? There is only one who is good. Hmm? If, you would ev if you would enter life, keep the commandments, keep the commandments, he said to him, Which ones? He said to Jesus, which commandments? And Jesus said, you shall not murder. You shall not commit adultery. You shall not steal. You shall not bear false witness. Honor your father and mother. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. Well, the young man said to him, all these I've kept. I've done them all. My works are great. What do I still lack? And Jesus said to him, if you want to be perfect. Everybody here want to be perfect? You got to be in Christ. You're not going to be perfect in the flesh. That's what he thought. If you, Jesus is telling him, you want to be perfect. What do I do? Go sell what you possess, give it to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven. And come follow me. And when the young man heard this, he went away sorrowful, for he had great possessions. Why was he sorrowful? Huh? Because my things that brought me to the state where I'm at right now, if I lose all of them, I have no future. Those don't make a future. Jesus, you're turning him down, walking away from him. Jesus is eternal life embodied in the body of Jesus Christ. Do you want eternal life? I do. What does that mean? It works eternal life. In the Greek, it's called zoe, Z-O-E. And it works on the inside of us also. When you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, that zoe life comes on the inside of you. And God starts to talk to you. The Bible says those that are joined to the Lord are one spirit. You're one spirit with the Lord. What does that mean? That means when the devil sees you, he sees Jesus. And if the devil sees Jesus, what does he say? Have you come to torment us? Have you come to torment us? Huh? That's what they said to Jesus when a legion came out of somebody. Huh? They said, have you come to torment us? When they see you, demons see you. That's what they say. Whoa. Jesus, I see you. Jesus, I know. Have you come to torment us? You're darn right. Get out of here. Get lost. Right. 
Believing unconditional love given to those who receive Jesus will give those a right vision of their future. Amen. Believing unconditional love. Do you believe unconditional love from Jesus? Yes. You know, there's a lot of Christians that don't believe that. Why? Because they don't understand what happened at Calvary. They think they're just like the Old Testament. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do good. I'm trying, well, what, what, what must I do to be good enough to be accepted by you, Lord? I pray every day, five times a day, I pray. I, I, I'm always repenting. I'm always asking for forgiveness. I'm, what do I do, Lord? The answer is in the Bible. The answer is Jesus said, believe on the Son. Lord. Believe on the Son. What do you, how do I do that, Lord? What happened to the Son at Calvary? He took your faults, all your faults, all your mistakes, all your sins in his body on the cross, nailed to the cross. You know the cross represents the tree of the knowledge of good and evil? And that's where it all started. The tree of the knowledge of good and evil is a law, it's a standard. And the tree of life is a law and a standard. This is the law of faith. This is the law of works. Mankind was put under the law of works by Adam believing what the enemy said to him. Mm-hmm. They agreed with the enemy, and they gave their authority away to the enemy. And what happened? They saw everything, this is right and this is wrong. And they saw that they were naked. And what happened when they saw they were naked? We got to hide. We got to do something. And they go to get fig leaves. That's an interesting thing. Why does it say fig leaves? Because it was a big leaf, you think? You know, there's another study we've done, and there's a good study about fig leaves. There's a man named Zacchaeus, little guy. He was a tax collector. Jesus was coming through Jericho. You know what Jericho means? Mm, that's where they blew down the walls. It must have been rebuilt. It wasn't supposed to be rebuilt. What happened, huh? Jesus is going through Jericho. And what happened? It's a crowd. He's going through a crowd. Everybody's bumping up against him. Everybody's asking him stuff. He's going up that crowd. And all of a sudden... Zacchaeus, being a little guy, just says, if I want to see him, i got to go up in this tree. So he climbs up in this tree to see Jesus. huh? It's a sycamore tree. That's what the Bible says. And all of a sudden, with all these thousands of people with Jesus, Jesus stops and Jesus says, Zacchaeus, we're going to your house today. What was it? Did Zacchaeus say, hey, Jesus, I'm Zacchaeus, here I am? The Bible doesn't record that. But you know what it does record? And if you study a little bit deeper, that sycamore tree is a type of fig tree. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve put figs to cover their nakedness. Mm -hmm. Fig leaves to cover their nakedness. It shows, those fig leaves show, I want to do what is right. I want to do what is right. But I don't have the ability to always do what is right. I fall all the time. But that desire is a signal to Jesus. It's a signal he sees you, all of us, at one time in our life, and all of you out there that know Jesus, at one time in your life, that signal went out from you, Lord, I, I, I'm trying. I want to do what is right. I don't want to lie. I don't want to cheat. I don't want to steal. I don't want to hurt anybody. I want to do what is right. That is a signal. It's like you taking a fig leaf. Hey, Lord. Hey, Lord. But you know what? That ability by just trying to do what is right, will never bring fruit. Where Jesus cursed the fig tree and it died from the root itself. Why? Because he says you'll never bring fruit from that fig tree. Why? Because your ability to want to do what is right will never produce fruit in you. It just won't do it. Why? Because you're in works all the time. And your conscience is condemning you and saying, when you want to do what is right and you blow it, what happens? You condemn yourself. But you're a faith you're a faith being. So how does that work then as a faith being? The more you condemn yourself, it's just like Jesus cursing the fig tree. You're cursing yourself from the roots up. And guess what? All sickness starts somewhere there. All death, all disease. It's the law that you're whipping on yourself. Condemning yourself with that. The law is the ministration of death. That is what he's talking about. A law of works, this is right, this is wrong, by your actions. Which you can never have perfect actions, no matter what you do, huh? It's gonna, you're going to struggle, you're going to have a hard time. Lord, what do I do then, huh? What do I do? The amount of focus that we give to our past. 
whether good or bad, takes away the amount of focus we'll give to our future. The amount of focus that we give to our past, whether good or bad, takes away the amount of focus we give to our future. The more we can see the unconditional love of God, the more we will see a good future. The more we can see the unconditional love of God, the more we will see a good future. Why? How does that work? Well, when you see that God accepts you through Jesus Christ 100%, that means there's nothing in you that God wants to deny against you. There's nothing in you that God wants to judge on the inside of you. Why? Because Jesus paid that price. He paid it in full. The cross, like I said, represents that tree. It's a wooden. The Bible says anyone that hangeth on a tree is under a curse. You know, for medicine, people you will see that on a pole. There's a snake on a pole. They get that from the Bible. Children of Israel, they were coming together in the wilderness and they started to get bitten by poisonous snakes. And it was killing a lot of people. And Moses cried out to the Lord, Lord, what do we do? I mean, thousands are getting bit and killed. And the Lord said, Moses, I want you to take a, a brass pole and I want you to make out of brass a snake around that pole. And I want you to put it in the middle of the congregation. And every time a person just looks at that pole, looks at that pole, and if they're bitten, they'll be healed. Do you understand that? What I'm saying? What does that mean? All we got to do is focus on what happened to Jesus at the cross that happened to me. I died. He paid the price in full for all my faults, all my sins and everything on the pole. You know, people wonder why Jesus on a, on a cross? What does that mean? Well, remember, he's 100% human, but yet he's 100% God. But he's a human that wasn't under that tree. But he's the sacrificial lamb. There is no sin in him. Sin is transgression of law. Sin is transgression of law. It says it in 1 John. So what does that mean? That means these are two laws. And mankind was now under that work, law of works. Like the rich young ruler. What must I do? He was under the law of works. So most of us still have that. We're, we're partly in understanding the grace of God. And still have that conscience that I got to be good enough. Well, isn't that your guide? Isn't that conscience your guide? No, because it can condemn you. It can kill you. It's the manifestation of that law against you. It's what's judging you. Well, how do we get rid of it? The Bible says, purge your conscience from dead works. You're not under works anymore. You're under faith. You're walking by the law of faith, which is this. Faith in what? Faith in God's unconditional love. Faith in what the cross has done for me. It's taken my guilt away. It's that guilt that motivates you to do the things you don't want to do. It's the guilt in all of us that makes your personality junk. That makes you condemn other people because you're condemning yourself. The you you see on the inside is the you you be on the outside. Why? Because you're looking at yourself and condemning yourself by that conscience. So what do we do? We look at the cross. Jesus on the cross, his flesh, his human body was nailed which is judgment. Those nails represent judgment. Nailed to that law. He was like being nailed to that tree. And all the whipping, everything by his stripes, all the things that were done to him were the punishment for all the wrong that humanity ever did under that standard. All things, all of humanity ever did under that standard. That's why Jesus died for the whole world. He wanted to end that. And when he said, it is finished, what does that mean? He's on the cross. He's saying, it's finished. What does that mean? It's done for mankind. The price has been paid. Then he decides, give up my, he gives up his spirit. And then what does he do? He goes, he dies. He goes to hell. The punishment for us, for broken law, broken law, which is sin. He's going in our place. But it can't, hell can't hold him. Anybody that's down there, you know, before, the ones that had died before him, the Bible says they, they came out of their graves. A lot of them come out of their graves. Why? Because they believed and trusted in God, no matter what. Think about what that's saying to all of us. What an amazing thing. huh? Well, it couldn't hold Jesus. Why? Because he was never under that. He died for us. 
Not for himself. He couldn't, didn't have to die for himself. He didn't do anything. Huh? The Bible says he was without sin. And a lot of people think, well, that's because he did everything perfect. That's what your conscience is interpreting to you, that we're supposed to be perfect in our actions before God. You can't. It's impossible. Huh? The Bible says it's as filthy rags, your righteousness. So how do we fix it? What are we supposed to do? And I'm telling you out there that don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, when he died on the cross, he died for you. He said it was finished in your life. If you can see that and accept that and believe with your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died for you and was rose from the dead for you, where are you? He's taken your old you and said your old you is dead. Romans 6 says, reckon yourself dead unto sin. That means dead unto, it doesn't say reckon yourself dead unto sinning. But that's how most Christians, I think, interpret it. Reckon yourself dead unto sinning. I'm trying not to sin. I'm trying not to sin. That's not what it says. It's saying, reckon yourself dead unto that old man, that old lifestyle, that whole everything. Mm -hmm. That you're not under works anymore. Reckon it as dead in your life. That's what baptism is symbolic of. Uh huh. So why water? It's like you drowned the old life. And you rose again, born again. To be born again means I have a new life. I'm born again of the spirit man, of the spirit man. I'm alive in Christ. I'm one spirit with him. The zoe that is in God, which is the life of God, which just means internal life, is now in me. So I'm going to live forever because he's in me. If you know Jesus, you're going to live forever. Say this prayer for me. Say, dear God, I want to know you. I want to know you like I'm supposed to know you. I want to receive what Jesus did for me, that he died for me so I can receive eternal life from you, that Jesus, the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit could come on the inside of me and live, that I can be the Emmanuel on the inside of me, that the temple of God is what I am now. I receive it in Jesus' name. Now I'm walking as a new creation. The Bible says in Colossians 3.10, put on the new man, Put on the new man, which is who you are, a pneuma man, a spirit man. Pneuma means spirit, breath. You're the pneuma man, a new man, a pneuma man. And what does that mean? You're alive in him, and he's alive in you. Mm -hmm. That the old life has passed away. You're a new creation. Put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge. What kind of knowledge? The gospel message that he, when he died, you died. Put on the new man which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So I'm putting on Christ and Christ is putting, letting me put him on. And he's living on the inside of me. I am a new man. I'm a new creation. You think Paul the apostle went around and was so guilty of all the Christians he killed before he got saved? Hmm? You had to let it go. It's the same with us. If you're looking at your past vividly, I did this wrong, I did that wrong, I did this wrong, I did that wrong. You will not have a future. That's what this is all about. We want to have a good future. And the future is promised to us in the gospel message of hope. God gives us his hope and his hope does not disappoint. Four steps to a bright future. Well, here's two of them. Pay attention to what you are focusing on. Are you paying attention to your focusing? Huh? Are you condemning yourself for this? Regretting that you did this? Looking at this, bad things in your life? Or are you looking at the good things? Well, and comparing your life now with the good things you had. Well, I used to be able to do this. I used to be able to do that. And I could do this, but no, I can't do anything. Well, that's a lie from the enemy. He wants you to focus on those bad things. That's right. If your focus is bad, you'll have bad fruit because it's the law. The law is the ministration of death, bad fruit. That's that law. Uh huh. The law is the ministration of condemnation. If you're condemned, you're not having fruit. The you you see on the inside, if it's condemned, guess what's coming out of you? Condemnation. And it stinks. And people don't want to be around you that way. Know who is in control of your future. Is it you? What is your part? Well, it's to stay in faith. Faith in God's unconditional love. 
faith in his mercy, faith in what happened to me at the cross. Is Jesus in control of you? Well, what is his part? He is the perfecter of your faith. Woo! I mean, how better could you have it? Jesus said, it's better that I leave you to his disciples and the Holy Spirit come. Why? Because the Holy Spirit can be in everybody where Jesus couldn't be with everybody at all times because he was a human being. Yes, he was God, but he had to set his Godhead aside. And he said, when the Holy Spirit comes, he will guide you and lead you in everything. The other two steps, make sure you're walking in the light. What's the light? The word of God. Psalm 119, 105, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And next is hope. Never, never, never let it out of your inner sight. Hope is a benefit of the gospel. Never let it out of your sight. Too many of us do. We think, I got this problem, Lord. Where are you, Lord? What am I supposed to do? Where's the hope? Faith is based on things hoped for. Hope is the intangible item that you want it to come become real. Well, faith, well, faith is the evidence of things hoped for. That's taking it and giving it life by your faith. God gave every human being life by his faith. He created everything that exists by his faith. The zoe of God is in his faith. That means it's in you and me. Think about that. The zoe of God, the eternal life of God is in us. You know, it's making everything in your body whole if you focus on that. Think about that. Where the enemy wants you to be condemned. Why? Because it's the ministration of death against you. Hope is the anchor of your soul. What is your soul? Your soul is your mind, your will, and your emotions. Is your mind all over the place, everywhere? Does it need an anchor? What happens when there's no anchor on a ship or a boat? It's floating everywhere. Are you floating everywhere? A lot of Christians are with every wind of doctrine. They're hearing this. Oh, you've got to clean it up, fix it up. You know, you've got to do this. If you're not doing that, oh, you're in trouble. If you're not doing this, you're in trouble. You're hearing all kinds of things and they're calling it Christian. What's Christian is the gospel message of Jesus and identifying that it was your death and your punishment that he paid. Mm-hmm. Victory's vision. That's what we need to put on at all times. Pastor Nancy, come on up. Let's pray a minute. I want to pray in the spirit. Father, give me wisdom. You know every person that is out there and all of them that are here. We need a word from you to build us up and encourage us. In Jesus' name. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. The Apostle Paul, before he was an apostle, before he was a uh, tremendous evangelist and, and whatever he was for the Lord. Teacher. Great teacher. He killed Christians. He had messages from the uh, head of Israel, Sanhedrin, whatever they were. Sanhedrin, mm -hmm, the leaders of Israel, gave them notes to follow to kill Christians. Why? Why? Because the bitterness on him that he said, this isn't right. It's not the message of being good enough. That's what the Lord wants us out of. When he was, the, he was on the road to Damascus, he was on a horse, I believe. And all of a sudden a bright light shines over him and he gets knocked down. Whether it was on the horse or whatever, I don't know. But he gets knocked down and he's blind for a time. What made him blind? Huh? The law, the guilt, the condemnation. That's what blinded him in the face of the light. When light turns on, darkness has to flee. Amen. And that's all he saw before was darkness. So then what happens? God wants us to have clear sight, clear eyesight in Him. And that's focusing on your future in Him, not focusing on your past, whether it was good or bad. You know, you can remember some good memories. There's nothing wrong with that. But when they take over your future, then it's bad. So right now, Lord, we receive you as our Lord and Savior. We ask for godly vision for the future 
that our eyes are open to our future with you. I thank you for it in Jesus' name, Father. It's a comfort. It's a comfort from the Comforter to know that you're leading us and guiding us in everything we do. Thank you, Lord. Woo! That was a great teaching, wasn't it? Yes. Oh, that was really good, good. dear. I really enjoyed we gotta that. We got to do it. And yes, you have to be a doer of it. Do, and, do, 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 do. <laughs> and it'll be up on YouTube. But right now, there's a ton of good ones up there for you. And in anything area that you need. And if you're real trouble, oh. one of the other tricks, and uh, Pastor John covered it, but didn't say exactly. Uh, if you didn't like your past, if there's things that got you were traumatized by, or that you didn't get healed with the Lord because you didn't have the proper knowledge, um, you'll go into what is known as fantasy world. And you'll create this whole world just to protect yourself from the pain of your past or the fear of your future. Yeah. And so you don't wanna, you wanna examine yourself. Are you in a fantasy world about your life in other words, you're creating this whole scenario that never really took place. And, uh, and what you're you. doing, let me say that, add this to what you're sure. saying. What you're doing is you're blocking what God wants for you. Yes. You're creating something that doesn't exist. Isn't that what you're saying, Pastor John, that we're supposed to do? No. Listen to the Lord. Look at what the Lord wants to do in your life. Many, many thoughts that we have aren't ours. But then we do have thoughts that are from God. Pay attention to those. Remember, the Bible says every good and perfect gift is from above. He's not coming to punish you. He's not putting you uh, through hard times. That's religion that's telling you that. That's Old Testament, that how God dealt with people. But through Jesus, he stopped all that. It's true. Glory. Woo! So we want you to listen to this again and again, and also other teachings that are up there. And they're excellent. Right, folks? Yes, amen. There you are. We have, uh, that's victoriesvision.org, and it'll take you to YouTube, and it's excellent. Uh, we have three books, Take It First for Health, and that's uh, that's a great book. Anyone want to say something about that? You're putting them on the spot, Nance. Well, I don't care. I loved it. It was great. There Before you go. Looking over again. Yeah, very, very informative. And yeah. I, I you know, the... To, um, the Forgiveness and then healing, and that's just very, it was very important to read that. Forgiveness first and then Every healing. Every healing scripture in the Bible, the pre to that scripture, the first thing is your sins are forgiven. Your iniquities are forgiven. Then healing comes. We got to forgive ourselves, let go of the guilt and condemnation, and healing will begin in your life. When you have regrets, when you have looking at the past, Oh, I shouldn't have did this, I shouldn't have did that. Even if you dwell on it, you know. Well, the good times, when you compare them, is bad. But if you're looking at good times, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just you don't want to compare it with now. Unless you're doing better. <laughs> then you'll be happy. Amen. And then don't, God's in it. Please don't compare yourself to other people. You are you. And God made you for a purpose. If you compare yourself to other people and want to be them... That's going to rob you of what God has for you. Don't do that. It's a lost God made cause you, you. There's nobody like you. That's right. And God's proud of you. He bragged on Job. He's bragging on us. And the devil's mad and jealous. So resist the devil, he'll flee. Emergency faith. There's five things in there you need to do. The first one is take control of your emotions. And then also, I can do that until a crisis hits you. And then let's see if you can, if you can stick on the word in your mind and force the fear out. So that's a great book. And then uh, The Five Owls of Love, and we got a romance person in here that got that book. Carol. <laughs> I Are love picking her. I know. You it's you last week. I, I always pick on her. But she loves it, right, Carol? I do. I love it a lot. <laughs> <laughs> Carol, can you say anything about The Five Owls of Love? There you well, go. you know, faith is a decision based on knowledge. Yeah. So is love. That's one of the love first things. Love is a faith uh, 
what do I want to say for that word? Obstacle? No, it's not obstacle again. Love is a faith decision. It's, it is faith. And like when you don't love somebody, you make the decision first to love them, then the feelings will come. Yeah. Same with, with faith. You make the decision for faith, the feelings will get better and better, and the, the real deal will come. And we got other uh, books in the works. Yeah, The Conscience. How many of you want to see him get done with these books? Oh, me. <laughs> Jesus, come back first. No, it's okay. <laughs> God, they know you. <laughs> it's not We're, a cop out. We can have Jesus anytime. <laughs> We're so glad you've joined us. We are happy always to be teaching you and training and equipping you. And remember, this isn't something we just say. We actually have to do this ourselves. And we've had a lot of victories. And you will too, especially when you harness um, um, thoughts in your mind against yourself. Sometimes you're your worst enemy. So we want to encourage you that these teachings... And I always say this, if you're going through a crisis, you're going to need to double and triple up on these teachings. And I guarantee you that word in there will drive it right out of you. And you'll go, I'm going to make a new decision for the word and stick on it. We love you very much. We thank you for all those that are on. I saw all the people on today. They are all supporters of Victory's Vision Christian Church. And I want to thank Thank you you. so much for your support. All the people here are supporters, and uh, we all belong to each other, and we want to thank you for your support. God bless you. Have a great week in the Lord. Amen. Thank you.